Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna talk about alcohol markers. I get a lot of questions when I'm coloring. Sometimes people want me to slow it down. So I thought today I would do a tutorial and offer you a free download of the image that I'm gonna be coloring. That way we can all color together. You can use what you have, but if you are looking for some alcohol markers, please check out our sponsor, Bienio. They have beautiful marker sets. They have both um, the standard bullet and chisel tip sets, and they also have the brand new brush tip and chisel tip set, which we're gonna be looking at today. These are hot off the press and they're really nice. So uh, we'll get more into that later, but I just wanna let you know that you can use whatever you want, but I will have a supply list underneath in the video description so you can find everything that I'm using. So uh, also you'll see my download, which will be this Bird of Paradise flower. It is in ping format, which means it's transparent. It's good if you wanna alter the image or you wanna group a few together. There's a JPEG format, so you you can resize it, print it out whatever size you want using whatever photo software you like. Or if you just want easy peasy lemon squeezy, I get a PDF version. Now this one's colored, but the one that you would download will be black and white. And then you can just open it up and print it. You don't have to do anything with a software and uh, and you can start coloring right away. So if you're gonna do this one, I highly recommend you print it twice if you're gonna do brush and bullet or just print it once and use whatever markers you have to color this large one along with me on today's tutorial. And um, then you can use the smaller ones for greeting cards or whatever. So I just tried to make it as easy for everybody to follow along with. We will be coloring um, one with uh, with brush tip markers and one with bullet tip markers just so you can see the difference how to get the same effects with both and hopefully if you don't have markers yet get an idea about what type is best for you the first thing that I want to talk about when we're discussing markers are the markers themselves I'm gonna zoom in so you can get a good look at what the marker tips look like here we have the two biennial markers, the uh, brush tip and the bullet tip version. Now both of them are going to have chisel tips on the ends that do not have the black bar. The black bar is just an easy way for you to identify what um, what end has the end you're probably most likely going to be coloring with. You can see the chisel tips are pretty much the same on either marker. And the line that you get from here is actually, I gotta say I use the chisel tips a lot, especially on a bullet marker you're gonna get the same chisel tip shape no matter which marker you choose. So the other thing I wanna show you is that when you're using a chisel tip, say if you're a little shaky, it's a great way to get nice, long, straight lines. Whereas if you're using a bullet tip, it might be difficult if you have any shaky issues to get those nice straight lines. You can use the different widths that you find on the chisel to get different widths to design with. So if you're wanting to make patterns, you could find that this is a really fun option to do that with. Now let's compare with the bullet tip. Now the bullet tip you're gonna see on many markers, it's kind of the default, and that's pretty much before Copics came out and became popular, that's kind of what we had to work with. You'll notice that some brands of bullet tips are firmer than others, but they're generally kind of like the tip that you'd find on a Sharpie marker. The uh, the Sharpie and Bic Market markers are what I started out with, and then I would just add some art markers and lighter colors to supplement them. I do find that, that like a Sharpie or a Market, their regular tips are a little softer, where these are a little bit thinner and a little bit firmer. So just, you know, if you're switching from like a Sharpie and you're going into an art marker, you might notice the art marker is a little bit firmer, but it's a pretty much the same idea. So when you're using a, a, a bullet tip marker that's got a chisel end, you're gonna find you use that chisel end quite a bit for filling in large areas or for blending because it's such a robust, uh, durable nib and you wouldn't wanna put too much pressure on the fine tip nib because you don't wanna wear it down. You wanna be able to retain those fine shapes. The other thing that's nice about the bullet tip is that it, it's not going to put out as much ink. So if you're on a coloring book like if or you're rubber stamping and you're getting in a small area, the brush tip can certainly get in a small area, but the brush tip is going to release a little bit more ink than the bullet tip. So if I just touch that down there, it's going to start filling a lot quicker. And you've got to be right on the tippy top with very little pressure to get a fine line, which you can see you can get a nice fine line. But if you're using the same pressure as you would with a bullet tip, you're going to get a um, you're going to get a wider line. Okay, so let's look at those side by side just so you have a comparison. So this one here is your bullet, and this one is your brush. 
Now, I want to bring this up a little closer to the camera so that you can see. Um, oh, something else I wanted to mention with these particular markers, there is a color code on the end. Um, what's really nice is there's a barcode on the side that has the color number and name on it. So if you have a bunch open, a bunch of your markers open, because maybe you're trying to blend really quickly and you don't want to be capping and uncapping, you can match it up a lot easier. So I do like that. So I'm gonna just kind of bring this on the edge because I want you to see this. So this tip is made of like a foam rubber type of material and you can see how flexible it is. Another thing that you can do with a brush tip is you can control the flow of ink a little bit more. So if you press more, you're gonna get more ink and if you lift up more, you're gonna get less ink. And this is where you do a technique called feathering where you kind of ease up on your pressure to get less uh, color and less ink as you go out. And they do that a lot when they're kind of gradiating a couple of colors together. Because you end up with tons of ink down here and a very feathered lighter ink up there. Generally, if you're doing that, you would start off with a paler color and you would either lay down a box of ink in that color and then you would do that feathering technique from the other side and then you could feather back with a lighter color to get it to... Um, uh, to fade in a little bit. The paper I'm working on is biennial marker paper and you can use whatever you like. Um, I do recommend that once you choose a paper or a cardstock that you're going to be working on is to stick with it because um, you're going to make it more difficult to learn if you're jumping around and trying different things all the time. Now when that dries we're going to have a really nice blend on that because um, uh, because we've got that really light, we lightened up on the red towards the center and so that rose color could kind of go in there and take over. So anytime you're using alcohol markers, it doesn't matter what brand you're using, you want to make sure that you um, swatch out your markers. So I decided on the brush tip markers here, I was gonna make a swatch. I took marker paper, I cut it into slits, uh, into strips, and I colored the strips with my marker and I used um, clear tape to tape it to my barrel. I can take this off anytime I want to um, if I decide that I don't want the swatches on the marker, but when I have these all laid out on my table and I'm coloring, it's really easy to see that. Another thing that I did was I took the, um, because the sets come with an index on the inside and outside of the box. So when I have this propped up on my table, I can open it up, I can tuck the flap underneath and I can set that down and I can see all my markers and I can also see their color chart. But I wasn't crazy about the way they organized the markers so I decided I'm gonna put it in the order that I like and make my own chart, which I did here. I just used a larger sheet of the marker paper. I folded it in half, made my chart, then I cut it out. So I would have this area that I could slide in to my marker box like that and I could have it right on top and see what I have. But that way I didn't have to take over the box and you know if I decided I wanted to put it back to the way it came I could do that I, I like to keep stuff like that just so that I could show you what it's supposed to look like how it comes and then you can see how I um, made it fit my style of working another thing I want to show you about brush tips and I'm going to show you this on the clear um, when you're looking at brush tip markers you're going to notice a really big range of price and these run about a dollar eighty a piece which is the cheapest foam tip brush marker I've ever seen generally if you're getting into the under three dollar or under four dollar foam tip uh, or brush tip markers you're getting what's called a fiber tip and they may last you quite well but um, once they start to dry out and I've noticed this a lot on clear blenders this is just kind of like one that you could find at any big box craft store see how the tip just kind of frays like that because this is a felt tip or fiber tip brush tip marker this type of material works really well for water-based markers but for whatever reason when they use these in the alcohol based markers they just they just fray and I think it happens when they start to dry out they um, they just kind of can't hold together anymore and then they you use them and they just kind of soften and fray out and then you'll never get a fine tip on that whereas the um, foam tip markers you can bend them they're going to keep that tip you can I mean essentially you can refill them I think I could probably pull this out and show you what this looks like um, because this looks just like the Copic, Copic Super Nib and I was just in a craft store the other day and they had the Copic Super Tips uh, just the nibs in a three pack and it was seven or eight dollars just for three nibs so you know even if you were to buy cheap markers and put the Copic nibs in it's going to cost more than a dollar eighty so that's just something to consider um, but these are the foam rubbery 
tips that aren't going to fray or split on you. So I did want to mention that because this, these are the cheapest markers that I have found or most affordable markers I have found that have that quality. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, what to use for uh, your ink. So you can sketch and then go over them with the markers. And some people like to sketch with colored pencil. You can use colored pencil, just don't use a heavy application because the um, alcohol in your alcohol markers can pick up that colored pencil. So if you had like a colored pencil drawing that had like a lot of colored pencil and you went over it with the markers, that's gonna lift up some of that wax and it could clog your nib and ruin it and then you would need to buy a replacement nib or a replacement marker for that. So I don't want that to happen to you, but just a line drawing would probably be fine. That said, Using colored pencils over your markers won't hurt anything and it looks fantastic and it's a great way to stretch your budget as far as um, being able to get a large assortment of colors for uh, a little bit of money. You can do kind of flat coloring with your markers and then you can go over it with colored pencils and that works really well. You could of course go over pencil lines. Uh, some of your yellows might pick up some graphite so I would just keep your sketch really light or if my favorite thing is to actually use marker and um, uh, I like to use a just a fine tip marker and you want to make sure that it is a water-based marker like these um, Bianyo Micron pens. The Sakura Micron pens are great too. These are half the price. These are like nine bucks for or ten bucks for nine markers. So um, I actually use them in a couple different images. Let me show you. This is the image that I scanned and have available for you. This was done with the Micron pen. I have to say that I do like the line quality here much better than my printer's printout uh, here on the original, but you can get a nice variety of different lines and the markers will not run them. You just have to make sure that your ink is fully dry. Uh, you can also use that for watercolor. As long as the ink is dry or you heat set it, you can go over it with either alcohol markers or watercolor and you're not gonna have a problem. If you are someone who likes to rubber stamp, M Memento is my favorite rubber stamping ink for markers, uh, but any water-based ink should work, but do a test before you do it. Um, and what you can do is you can stamp something on a scrap of paper, heat set it or let it dry, and then you can take a Q-tip with some you know, household alcohol and wipe over it and see if it smudges and feathers. If it doesn't, then you're good to go. Um, I would advise you not to do it with your markers just because if you're not sure, you could end up picking up ink and dirtying up the tips of your markers. So, and another ink that works great is your computer ink. If you have an inkjet printer, your, um, your computer printout ink is gonna work great Great. You're not going to get any smudging, again, as long as you let it dry. And I printed this right on the marker paper here, and I tested it out. This was my test. That's why I colored this one here that you're going to end up getting black and white, but I colored it because I wanted to make sure that if I printed on the marker paper, which it does have a bit of a, a sizing to it, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to run, and it worked perfectly. So, um... Just remember, you're, you don't want the alcohol pens to interact with the ink you're using to either draw or to print or to stamp. So alcohol is alcohol-based and you know your dye-based inks are typically water-based and that's why they don't make each other run. Micron pens, I believe, are like an India ink, so they, they do seal down, but the alcohol doesn't seem to have any, maybe it's not India ink, it's, it's some waterproof ink that for whatever reason doesn't affect alcohol pens. So or alcohol, yeah, alcohol pen. So I just wanted to get that out there. Test it first if you're not sure. If you've got like a no-name pen and you're not sure if it's gonna work, just test it with some household alcohol so you don't disrupt your markers and um, and you should be good. So as far as paper, that is another personal preference. Marker paper is a type of paper, and I did a sketchbook Sunday with this um, illustration a couple weeks ago. Uh, marker paper is very thin. It's kind of translucent, so what I did when I made my Bird of Paradise illustration, I sketched a Bird of Paradise on typing paper, and then I put my marker paper on top, and I traced it with my pens, because um, it's translucent. So that's really nice. If you've done a really beautiful drawing, you could put your marker paper on top, and you could trace it with your fine liners, and do all your detail there, and then you don't have to try erasing. Because this is such a thin paper, if you're erasing, you might wrinkle it while you're going. Uh, it is a very robust paper. I don't think it would damage a surface, but it could just kind of wrinkle it because you've um, you've moved it around. Um, your marker paper is going to go through, unless you're getting a, like a render marker paper, most marker paper you're going to see the image on the back. It doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't go onto the page underneath, which is really, uh, really important. 
And um, something else I wanted to mention is that if you're like me and you have pulled a sheet of marker paper out of your out of your pad of paper and you can't remember what side is front and back, I'll show you how to tell. So if you have your sheet of marker paper, obviously we know because we've sketched on this one, but if you have your sheet of marker paper and you can't remember, what you do is you take a marker and around the edge that you're not going to see in your drawing, like maybe you're going to cut it off or whatever, make a mark, okay? Then look on the back. If you can see your mark, if you can see your mark on the back, then you've, you're on the right side of the paper. Now let me make a mark on the back and show you what this looks like. Now if you're on the wrong side of the marker paper, you're going to notice it looks shiny. I think I can catch the light there. Maybe, and you can see it's kind of glossy. It takes a little bit longer to dry. And then when you flip it over, you can barely see that line on the front side. Okay, that's because there's like a, uh, a sizing on the back to keep that marker from running through onto the next page and to keep you from actually using too much marker. When you're working on cardstock, like most card makers do, it's going to take a lot more marker. You wouldn't want to use this on watercolor paper, for instance, because it would just suck up the marker and it would waste quite a bit of it. So um, that said, though, if you love the look of working on um, like a glossy surface, like maybe you're like, well, Lindsay, I like that like puddly look. I like how my ink stays, you know, what a long time. Why can't I use that? You absolutely can. But I just want to let you know that that is the wrong side of the paper. <laughs> just, you know, use whatever makes sense to you. But you can see like if I if I'm on this side, I'm almost lifting up like the color underneath. It's almost like I'm working on like a marker palette or something. So you're going to end up with, you know, instead of layering color and getting a nice gradations that way, you're going to actually lift up the color underneath, kind of like you're working on Yupo paper. So um, that's marker paper. You can also use cardstock. If you're going to use cardstock, I recommend um, a cardstock called Nina, which is, I just have a scrap of it here. It's just a um, it's just a cardstock. You can print on it in your printer if you want to. If you use digital stamps, you can stamp on it. It's really smooth, so it takes stamping really well, and it's thick enough that it feels substantial on a card, which that's the that's why I use it. It does bleed through, um, so you are going to, you know, you're going to want to layer it on something. If you're working it in a card, if you're making a card, you wouldn't want to just fold the Nina in half and color on it because you'll see it on the inside, um, but you can also work on either side of the cardstock versus um, a marker paper where there is a, a, run, a front and a back. Now what I did when I was going to print off my images, because you might be working on marker paper, what I did was I put a B, like when I tore it out of, the paper, out of the paper pad, I put a B on the back side so that I know when I load that in my printer, I've got to load it, I like, mine takes the paper front side down, so I made sure I loaded the paper so that I could see the B, and that way I printed it on the correct side. So that's something that you, you probably want to do if you're going to tear out a piece of paper, just in the corner, use a pencil, put a B on the back side so you'll know. Um, and I know this is long, I apologize for that, but I just wanted to kind of give you some, uh, some help and make sure that you're on the right page when you start off in your marker journey. Um, swatch your markers. Some sets come with a little swatch, like this one has a hand coloring swatch here, because the printouts are not going to be exactly the same. Like you go to your printer and you can print out, you know, a, a swatch card that's pre-colored. It's not going to be the same as what you color from your markers. It's important you do that. Um, and also I wanted to mention that Bienio offers a 12 month replacement warranty and a 30 day money back guarantee on their products, uh, as well as lifetime support guarantee. So reach out to the customer service. If you ever have a question, they are very nice people and they are really committed to their business and their customers. So without further ado, let's go on to the Bird of Paradise coloring tutorial. Go print out your, um, your image that you want to color on. Feel free to pause as we're going along. If I'm moving too fast, I will be going back and forth between the brush version and the bullet version. So, um, you could probably keep up pretty well if you're just doing one or the other, but if you're doing both, then feel free to pause it. Uh, work at your speed and enjoy the process because that's the most important part of this whole project. <laughs> 